Last time on Suit Up. We used our rotary tool to feather edges around the eyes and to smooth out some seam lines. Then we used our heat gun to seal the foam. We used Quick Seal to fill up all the gaps and further smooth our seams. And once the Quick Seal dried, we put down two to three layers of Plasti Dip on the top dome of the helmet. Once dried, we used Plaid's FX Paints to start painting the surface silver as a base coat. Then, a top coat of green we mixed ourselves. Welcome back to Suda. Last time we saw each other, we heat sealed the helmet, we quick sealed the helmet, we plastic dipped the helmet, and we painted the helmet. This time, we're adding on the eyepieces and all the other plastic parts and antenna. It's the home stretch, folks. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I keep saying silly things. Why should I? Why, why am I saying that? I'm just gonna. Also a robot. Hello, Dutch. Hi, I'm Dustin, and I've been making tokusatsu props and costumes for over 10 years. The costume work I did led to some pretty interesting opportunities. Now, I want to share my tips and help guide you while you make your own props and costumes. If you're ready to make some cool stuff, then welcome to Suit Up. This is foam mesh Hubbard liner. So there's a bunch of this stuff you can find in a roll for like $5 or less at like your Walmarts, or your Targets, just your general home goods stores. Uh, it's a foam mesh and it works really great. Now take a good look. If you get really, really up close, you can kind of see through it. It works better with your eyes, I promise. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna paint this and this is gonna be what ends up giving us the color that we want behind that clear plastic on the bottles. So, always good to have this on hand. This is a great tool to use for uh, Kamen Rider masks, especially ones with the uh, cool details under the visors. Uh, if you can't do any resin castings or vacuum forming, this is the best way to make this. And it's also a really great way to change the color of the uh, plastic without actually having to paint the plastic. So, we're gonna give this one a little bit of definition, and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna be using the metallic red that I have, and we're also gonna be using the plain red that I have. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bunch of stripes going straight across, just like, you know, regular stripes. Then we're gonna do a full coat covering everything with this, and then a very light dusting of this one more time with a dry brush. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Here we go. All right, so we got two things we have to do before we get to cutting this out and putting it onto the helmet. First thing I want you to do is I want you to feel up at the top of the bottle where it starts to get really weak. That's about half an inch, three quarters of an inch down from the uh, really hard uh, plastic lip right there. So it's about right there. I'll, what I want you to do is I want you to poke it with your knife and then I want you to try to cut around as perfect of a circle as you can, okay? What we're trying to do is we're trying to get this lid part to pop up. This is the hardest part of the plastic, and really all we need is just this front part. We're going to do our best to avoid the best best buy or sell by date, because usually that's either like written in on plastic or it's like etched in, and it's annoying. Plus there's also this part of the plastic that's like this weird, you know, glue that holds on everything. We don't really need that either. Uh, we're gonna cut this part away, and then we're gonna tape up everything that's usable. We're gonna use blue painter's tape to tape up what's usable. We're gonna cut away the bottom too, and then we should be able to fit it inside the helmet and trace the shape. It'll make sense as we go. Here we go. So hey folks, I found something interesting I think you might like to see. So when I put this in, I put the bottle in vertically. 
actually what I found was more interesting of a shape and better of a shape is when I cut away the back, like a, like, I cut away like a third off the back of it, see? There's that circle, there's a third of it, cut that away. Uh, if you sh if you sit it in there like this, and space it out, it gives you a lot of space to glue something down, and also holds the shape inside the helmet really well. I'm gonna show you on both sides, okay? So, the first thing I marked down, I'm actually not gonna use. But you see all that sits in there? I'm gonna try the same thing, I'm just gonna flip it over, put it in on this side. Hopefully, we'll get the same kind of results on that side, and it looks like we will. Cool, eh? All right, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do it that way instead. All right, I'm gonna cut away some of this excess, and I'm gonna redraw those markings. It's all trial and error. Once you get once you get one, the second one cuts out a lot easier. All right, here we go. All right, so it looks a little bit confusing, but what I did was I put some X's through some spots so I know not to cut. But what I did was I have the outline of the shape I need, plus a bigger outline, and that's where I'm gonna be gluing. So I'm gonna be cutting all this extra away. We're gonna do one more test fit, and we're gonna put some glue on them, and then we're gonna press them in onto the helmet, and hopefully then we'll put some backing behind it, and then we'll do the same thing with the other side. All right, here we go. All right, there's eye shape gold cut out. Let's try testing it in here. It looks like it's gonna be a pretty good fit. Check that out. I think we'll be able to get away with just using hot glue on this. When I glue this on, I'm not gonna glue all the way down on this tip. I'm gonna glue just partially because we need to put something in between here and here soon. We'll get there very soon. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna try and get this glued in. We're gonna cut away, pull away a lot of this tape, and we're just gonna glue some of this in. So I'm gonna get the hot glue gun running, and we're just gonna do a little by little, hot little bead, hot little bead by a time. Just a little bit at each time. We don't need too much at a time. Too much at a time is gonna cause problems. So yeah, we have one eyepiece in. We still need to do the plastic under it. We're gonna do that a little bit later. We're gonna focus on getting the other eye in first and then we'll start focusing on putting in the under eye. Now, I see, yeah, I'm sure you all noticed I uh, put this glove on and it's actually two gloves. And the reason why I did this is that uh, touching hot glue sucks. So sometimes you're gonna actually really need to be able to press to make sure that stays. So what I would recommend doing is getting some gloves take care of that or using a low temperature hot glue gun uh, I, mine's high temp that's all I have I don't know what happened to my good one I had to use this one I don't I don't know who this is I don't remember getting a green one but I, I have one apparently so this is yours and you remember me uh, sorry let me know and get you back anyways here we go we got this one time to do the exact same thing we did last time 
cut off the top of this, tape it all up. Don't tape up around the bad marking. Don't tape up around there. And we need to get that round dome is shape like we got last time. Here we go. We'll get back to crafting soon, but first let's talk about Sudup's very first sponsor, Surfshark. Have you ever logged into a public Wi-Fi and like kind of got a creeping suspicion that somebody was watching your stuff? Well, maybe you weren't entirely wrong. Did you know that one in six people have had online internet security breaches in the last year alone? But it's not limited to public Wi-Fi either. It can happen at work or at home, or maybe even at your favorite coffee shop down the road. One of the best ways to defend yourself is with a VPN. And I've used a couple before, but the best one I've used so far is Surfshark. It's fast, simple, and very easy to use. And it's the only VPN service to offer multiple connections across unlimited devices. So if you have a household with many different devices, Surfshark's great for you. I use Surfshark across all of my devices when I was out and about at my new job while trying to research all the stuff I needed to do for this video. It helped me find all these great articles and reference images for the projects we're working on today. With Surfshark, your IP address stays hidden. You can block ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts. You can do so much more, all while protecting your personal data. You can easily log into a foreign version of Netflix or even HBO Max. Plus, if you're outside the United States, you can access some services only available inside the United States. It's a great service for expats looking to catch up on their favorite shows from home. Depending on your region, with Surfshark, you can get cheaper flights, cheaper hotel rates, or maybe even cheaper car rentals. You can also avoid country internet blockades. How do you think I got my toy Tokusatsu fan club membership? Surfshark! And a Japanese bank account. That's, uh, that's besides the point. Anyways, look, today Surfshark and the next decade are here to offer you a Megalodon sized deal. We are offering an absurd 82% off Surfshark's two-year plan, plus an additional two months for free. That's less than $250 a month, or less than $30 a year. Along with bigger savings, Surfshark offers more than the competition. Unlimited devices, two-factor authentication, ad blocking, and more. Keep your data safe, protect all of your devices, enjoy an open internet, and spit in the face of people like Ajit Pai. Secure your platform, secure your digital life, protect yourself today by securing this deal from Surfshark and the Next Decade. Check the description down below or check out thenextdecade.co for more information. Thank you Surfshark for being our first sponsor. Now, let's get back to crafting. Okay, so I made sure to check it fits. I pulled up all the tape in certain areas just so that, I, so that I don't struggle like I did earlier. And as soon as I glue in this part and I'm happy with how secure it is on the inside of the helmet, then I'm gonna start pulling up some of the tape and we're gonna start tacking up some more hot glue and make sure this stays in. Now I'm gonna use my fingers to hold this in place. Like I said, use, a hot or use some rubber gloves. It'll protect your fingers. Double up, triple up if you need to really insulate your hands so you don't burn yourself. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is a little aside, but if you're ever having trouble keeping a glue stick in your glue gun because, you know, you still want to put a new fresh one in, but you can't quite get it to, you know, stick in there, take a little bit of glue from the other one, dab it onto the end, flip it around, get it in there right up against the old one till it forms. And then you should have one that hangs and will eventually thread right in there, no problem. Cool. Hope you learned something. All right, I'm waiting for glue to dry. So, about to put the back half in, and then we're gonna do something different. So yeah, hang in there. Almost there.
Okay, so we got both eyes in. All we had to do was just add a little bit of glue around to all these edges on the inside. Add in the plastic. Then we added in the foam mesh that we painted earlier in order to secure all of it in. So if you look in there really closely, it's not perfect. If I had it my way, I would have it curving in, but I really don't have everything I need to do that. Plus, I'm trying to make this easy on y'all. You know, less materials, easier it is to use. Now, what's cool about this foam mesh is if you look really closely, you can kind of see through it. Now, you wouldn't be able to do that with most of the other rider masks and other rider mask eye techniques. So this is why I also picked this one that's good for y'all. Um, we're gonna do one more thing that's also gonna help with your visibility and also breathability. We're gonna focus on that here next. So let me put away um, some of this uh, foam liner stuff and I'm gonna get out a couple of special things. Be back in a sec. Oh, remember that left tier part of the pattern? I cut it out and I actually extended it a little bit so it goes past all this area down here a little bit more and also sits nice and flush against this edge. When I flip it over, it should work the same on this side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of pattern, and I hope you guys save this, I hope you remember it. I save this piece of pattern, and I cut it out like this, note how, how I've uh, extended it. I extended it this way by cutting out this part first and then trimming away just a decent amount away around the outsides, shoving it into place, and then kind of getting a feel of where it was sitting inside the mask, uh, forcing the paper down a bit, pulled it out, noticed where all my creases and, and uh, folds were, and I cut those all away and this is my result. So this works really, really good. We're gonna copy this down twice onto this. Now this is a Hobart face shield. I buy a lot of these for many different things like visors and whatnot. Uh, they're really, really, really good. I like these a lot. It's a great plastic. Um, it has an outside film that you could draw on and then when you're ready to actually glue your thing in you can like put a knife up next to the side and then pull the plastic and it'll cut away everything but the part that you want to glue down. Uh, it's great. So uh, but this is what we're going to be using. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm probably going to trace on this side, because I already traced something on this side that I... Oh, sorry. I'm probably going to trace on this side because I've already traced on this side, and I don't really want to use this stuff anymore. Um, now, when I work with this kind of stuff, I need to use tin snips. These are really, really heavy-duty scissors. They are no joke. These are really, really, really sharp. These are really strong. They work great for tin. They work great for really thick plastic. They work really great on fingers too. So do yourself a favor and be careful. Be safe, don't hurt yourself. I'm gonna try my best not to hurt myself here in front of y'all, but if you guys get to see it, hey, Patreon members, what up? You get to see how I hurt myself today, what up? Ooh. Uh, all right, something this over. I think I should have enough space on here to get two of these nicely. Yeah, probably, it looks like that. So I'm just gonna trace down one and then I'm gonna trace down the other one right behind it. And then we're gonna cut this thing in half, make it a little bit easier for me to work with. All right, so hopefully you can see I have those two trace up on there now. I'm gonna cut away this uh, third and start trimming this up. Focus on doing one of these at a time. Now you can do this with regular scissors, but it might be a little bit more difficult to do. This is why I choose tin snips. They're really, really good. Uh, they handle a lot of these edges really well, and you can do some curves with them too. So. Always keep your extra scrap. If you ever have scrap, especially if it's like, if it's a tiny itty bitty amount like that, nah, maybe not worth keeping. But if it's a big, big piece like this whole thing, yeah, go for it, keep it. All right, so I've cut out one of them. Now, this is almost ready. The last thing you need to do 
is to peel off the plastic off both sides. Now this might take some time to get it just right, but hopefully you can grab it and be able to peel it right off. Try not to touch too, too much of the surface. You don't want to get your oily fingers all over it. This would be a really great time to put gloves on. So that's what I'm going to do because uh, I already smudged it a little bit. So yeah. Uh, once you get your gloves on and you got all the plastic peeled off of these parts, you're ready to start gluing them in. Now you can go ahead and glue the bottom parts and the corner sides just fine, but do not glue this top part. We got something special in store for that and I'll explain it when we get there, but you can set all the rest of it in. Uh, you can hit this with your heat gun and bend it a little bit just so you know you're gonna have to use a little bit more heat. Uh, for this project though, I don't think I'm gonna need to do too, too much other than just bending it by hand. And there we have it. I've glued in the tiered pieces, I've glued in the backing of the eye pieces, I've glued in the eye pieces. Now, at a distance, it looks like it's red plastic. Up close, you can kind of tell that it's still kind of clear plastic. Not much we can do about that right now, but for a simple cosplay Kamen Rider mask, this came out pretty good. So we still have some more things we need to do. We need to make some antenna, we need to add on the uh, gem piece, then this part's mostly done. We might add on a strap down at the bottom so we can make this look like an accurate B-type mask. But uh, I say for now we're gonna set this over to the side and we're gonna start working on getting the job piece taken care of. So for the job piece, you're gonna wanna get a baseball cap you do not care about. Now, uh, I like this baseball cap, so I'm not gonna be carrying this one up, but you want one that's kind of like this. You can find cheap ones at the craft store. Just make sure it's one where you can tear off the brim of the hat really easy. You'll see why here pretty soon. Okay, if you made it this far, I want you to know, I'm really proud of you. This isn't easy, and if this is your first time making a helmet, then like, you're doing great. Especially if you've gotten this far, seriously. Pat yourself on the back. We're almost done, this is the home stretch. Let's talk about the jaw. Uh, I did all this separate and I wanted to wait and see because uh, I wanted to see how many of you were actually paying attention. So uh, if you're paying attention and you're still sitting here with a blank jaw piece wondering what to do with it next, you're doing good, don't worry. Here we go, we're gonna start working on the jaw. Here's everything we're gonna need for the jaw piece, okay? You're gonna need the jaw piece that you've worked on so far. You're gonna need the pattern that you cut out earlier. 
because we're gonna do some extra work to it that I did not explain during the pattern making part specifically so we can talk about it during this part. Uh, some two or three millimeter foam, nothing too crazy. This is just some simple white stuff. Uh, contact cement, uh, scissors, maybe. I would still prefer you use a knife on this stuff. Uh, the next thing you're gonna need is a baseball cap, but I want you to cut off and remove the brim. The brim is uh, this part of the hat right here. So remove this part of the hat. So all you'll be left with is the dome-like top structure. So you should have just the cap. Now I ripped out the inside sweatband a little bit. There's a specific reason why I did this. You don't have to go as far as I did, but you'll see why I do this a little bit later. All right. So uh, I have a little bit of regular foam just to, you know, spread around some contact cement when we need to get to spreading around some contact cement. I also have some four millimeter thick what the foam. Now this is really durable, super, super strong foam. I love this stuff. This stuff is great. Please go check it out. Uh, Cosplay Apprentice sells it on Amazon. Uh, go check out his channel too. He has some really, really cool videos and talks about how durable this stuff is. And it took me a couple of video watches for me to get convinced and then I finally tried it and holy crap, this stuff's amazing. So yeah, uh, we're gonna be using a combination of uh, SKS Props HD Foam and Cosplay Apprentices What the Foam. Uh, two very different foams, both very, very good. Both have very different uh, purposes. Okay, cool? Cool, cool. All right, so the first thing we're gonna start messing with is our pattern. Uh, now, I folded the pattern in half, and on the chin I cut away, or drew up one centimeter, one centimeter up, and then all the way down and around, kind of like a flat curve. Take a good gander at that. See how I did mine? You're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. Here's what you're going to do. You're gonna cut away all that stuff, then you're gonna trace this down onto your one millimeter foam. You're gonna cut it out. You're gonna put some glue on it. You're gonna glue onto this, and you're gonna line it up with the teeth up at the top, and you're gonna lay it down flat. You should leave some space just under the bottom of the jaw. That's the way it's supposed to be. Now remember this V that we drew onto the front of the chin? We're gonna be carving that away after we get this top part on. So here we go. All right, so just like last time, we're gonna fold this over, and we're gonna cut that new line that I asked you all to draw on there, all right? Cut away that. Try to make sure these parts are staying completely flat to the parts behind it. We want this as even as possible on both sides. All right, cool. Oops, dropped it already. Great. Now I'm sure you're wondering, why are you still wearing the gloves? Uh, I'm still wearing the gloves because we're gonna be using some hot glue again. That's why my hot glue gun is still plugged in over here, but we're not gonna be using it right this second, but we will be needing it. So yeah. You're gonna find the cleanest, nicest part of the foam. If you want that to be the front, then check the other side, make sure that it's just equally as good. And if it is, that'll be the front. Oh, ever so slightly off, ever so slightly off. Uh, let's do that. That should still be pretty good. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> Now, usually I would pin this down, but this is such thin foam that it's gonna be really hard to pin anything. So I'm just gonna do my best to try to trace this. Uh, really jagged stuff first and keep it as even as possible without moving it. So you can see I drew a couple of little extra dots up on the top just that's just so I know like which line these are supposed to go over so I'm gonna cut this out I'm gonna flip it over we're gonna add some glue to it and then we're gonna glue up this side
This is all glued up. I'm gonna let this dry. This is still drying. I'm gonna let this sit here for a second. In the meantime, I'm gonna prepare some strips out of this what the foam. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. I'm also gonna move this helmet. Like it looks cool and everything, but I just don't want it to get damaged. Yeah. We need to be pretty precise about this. So let's just do one nice long strip and try to keep it as even as possible the whole way down. Oh, I made one long strip. I'm gonna find the perfect middle point. That should be more than enough. Perfect. These should be about even. All right. I'm gonna check this and see how it's sitting. It's about as good as we're gonna get. So I'm gonna go ahead and start lining this up. I'm gonna start working with the teeth in the middle and working my way over. I'm gonna start right with the center. I'm gonna try to line this up as nicely as I can. All right, so that first I laid on pretty nicely. Happy with that. This happens. Let's see what happens with this next side. And there you go. See how we have that nice little edge over all of it now? Cool. Now, if you see somebody with the helmet and they didn't do this part, we know they weren't listening and they weren't paying attention. <laughs> so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve out a little bit of this center part with the knife. Now, just try not to go too crazy. You're just gonna be cutting three simple triangles. Uh, usually I would do what I call the two knife maneuver on this, but I think we could just do a simple V cut. A gentle V-cut, and not even a full V-cut. We're just gonna go straight down the middle as nicely as we can. Okay, so now I did one cut, two cut, three cut, and then I did two more cuts with like a 60 to 40 figure degree angle cut going towards the center of the jaw, okay? Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend, and you should see all that extra stuff sitting right there. You should be able to grab these two edges right here, and then slide your knife back all the way into where it's cutting out right there. And if you did this correctly, it should come out kind of like a flat, maybe rounded cleft. You could start at the other side too if you really, really want to. Uh, I don't recommend it though. I think it looks cleaner if you can get it all to come out uniform. All right, so mine didn't actually come out as clean as I was hoping it would, but that's okay. Because I'm gonna hit this with a heat gun one more time and then it should open up some more pores. And then I'm gonna fill that whole space in a little bit more with some quick seal. Then we're gonna plasti dip this part. Heat seal this, quick seal this, plasti dip this, and get back to me in a few minutes. See you soon. So here I have the jaw all plasti dipped up. The chin is sealed up. See how we got the nice cleft in there from the quick seal? It ain't perfect, but that's okay. This is supposed to look like something from 1971 anyways. Um, now, the back of it. I did my best not to cover it up too, too much because we're still gonna be gluing some things onto the back of this. So, uh, before we go any further, everywhere where it's black has to be silver. So let's do a few layers of silver paint and we'll be back after this is all silvered up. Uh, just to throw it out there too, once you're done throwing it down the silver, uh, along these edges where you've added all this new foam and all these new bits of detail, add in some of the darker silver and then wipe it away really quickly just to give it some more detail, make it look a little bit nice. Okay, here we go. And here we are with the jaw completely painted up, a little bit of detailing done just to, you know, accentuate some, some areas there. Um, now I used tape on the back in order to make it easier for me to hold it. So I'm gonna peel all this away. So the next thing we have to do is get this jaw piece attached to this cap piece. And the way I'm going to do that is with some hot glue. Yay, more hot glue. I know, I'm not excited about it either, but 
it's probably gonna be the best way to handle this right here. Now we're gonna make it to where it's just ever so slightly loose on our face, not too loose, just loose enough to where we can slip it over our jaw and sit comfortably under our jaw. So I have these two strips of what the foam. Now the reason why I picked this is because even if I put some uh, hot glue on either side of this and attach it to the cap, I will be able to go back through later with some uh, thread and a sewing machine and stomp through some thread to actually give it some extra grip. So that's uh, part of the reason why I like this stuff. It's very strong. It's also part of the reason why I'm having it up here because I have a feeling it's gonna be something you're gonna be slipping on and off often. So like, you want these to be kind of kind of tough. You don't want to lose these. You, you don't want these to break. So that's why we're getting this what the foam stuff. It's very strong. It won't break. All right, so I'm gonna pull the tape out of this next. So what we are trying to do is figure out how this is gonna sit on us. Now, I know that this is the front of the cap right here because this is the sweat guard, you can hear it, it's up on the front. So what you wanna do is you wanna figure out where from the sweat guard can you put these pieces to where they're completely even from each other. So I'm gonna remove my cap real quick, put on this cap. Okay, this is actually perfect, so check this out. The spot that I picked is right next to this, and it's also right next to this string part. So what I'm thinking is, I'll get this lined up just like it's supposed to be where it's supposed to line up with this inner ring sweat guard that I pulled out earlier. So we're gonna attach it on both sides with hot glue. Just like that. All right, I'll try to mark this down with a Sharpie real quick. Okay, move that over. We're gonna try and do the same thing on the other side in the exact same spot. Now, if you check on the outside of the cap, you should hopefully start to see some of those markings you put up earlier. They're about equidistant from each other, so this is looking like it's gonna be just perfect. See what I mean? I sandwiched it. I took this thing, I put it on the outside of it. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, so what I did was I had some help getting these things taped on as I was holding the mask up to my face while these parts were hanging down. I'm gonna hot glue this part down, and then we're gonna hot glue the other side, and then we're gonna cut away the excess, and we're gonna see how it fits. Okay, so now I have these two parts attached. Uh, I actually messed up the paint, so I'm gonna repaint this again a little bit separately. So yeah, don't rush, take your time. Anyways, uh, see these extra little flaps at the bottom? I'm gonna cut these away. I'm gonna do a 45 degree angle cut towards it, so then hopefully it won't be in the way. Okay, now those are undone. I'm gonna test this, fit this real quick and see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna take off my hat and my glasses and we're gonna try on this new face mask that we put on. I don't think I want my hair done in there. I'm gonna let it hang loose. There we go. Now we take this part and slide it on. And there we go. Now we don't have all of it done just yet. We still need to add the jam on the center and the antenna, but we are like 95% done. So, hey, cool. Uh, uh. Now, we still need to add on that extra stuff. We're gonna do that here in just a few more minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and repaint a couple things, and this is a really good time for y'all to repaint a few things too. You're almost done. A little bit left to go. 
<sighs> okay, antennas, antennas. And then the gym, and then we're done, and that's it. Hi. So, uh... My SD card ran out of space. Man, this has been a disaster trying to record this, but I'm trying to finish this out strong so that you guys can follow along and get it done just right. So, uh, ah, bear with me. I, I, I glued on the gem on the forehead and I started to attach the antenna when I finally realized that the SD card ran out. So, bear with me here. I'm gonna try to recap what I've done so you can see for yourself. The first thing that I did was I touched up with some paint. And the way that I touched up with some paint was I took the uh, blue painter's tape I have right here, and I covered, I covered up the eyes. And I went around all the edges and made sure there was a good even seam all around it. So hopefully you could see the eyes are nice and attached super cleanly. The plastic's all up nice there, the, the tape and the uh, paint uh, didn't cause any problems. It was, it was perfect, it came out great. So uh, after that, I glued on the jet. Now this has a couple things that are a little bit different. I can't just slap some super glue on there and jam that thing on there and they're like, oh hey, it's done. So I wanted to show you what I did. I'm gonna give you a demonstration on a some scrap foam I have sitting around. Uh, so here's some scrap foam. I'm gonna cut off a little bit right now because I'm gonna save the rest of this for another example of something else I did earlier off camera. Uh, Okay, so here are the gems I used. These are really, really tiny ones. These guys were cheap. Uh, I got this whole bundle for like $1.99, something like that. Uh, for the sake of being able to see it on the camera, we're gonna use a pink one. So, all right. So I have my little pink gem. See it, itty bitty. I got my foam. Now what I did was, in order to be able to see where I was gonna glue it, I lined it up just right, exactly where I wanted it. And then I took my gem, I put it on my thumb, and I just jammed it into the foam and pressed as hard as I could. And it left a visible circle. All right, now inside that visible circle, I scored the surface of the foam. You know, scraping it up, not too much, just, the, just enough, kind of like making a bunch of little asterisks or uh, hashtags inside. See, so yeah, I tore that up just enough. Now the reason why I did that is so that that super glue would have enough tooth to grab onto something. So now I'm gonna put a small dab of super glue onto that. I'm gonna let it soak into all those little pores. And then, after I put my small little amount of super glue, you really do not need a lot, you just need a small amount. So now while I wait for that to seep in a little bit more, I'm gonna take the gem I had and I'm gonna score the back of the gem as well. Be careful doing this, you don't wanna hurt yourself. Just scrape up the back, not a lot, just a lot, just enough. Make a few little scribble scribbles just so then there's enough tooth there for the super glue to grab onto. See how I scraped it up just like a little bit, not a lot? All right, now I still have my circle on the foam. I still have my score lines on there. I'm dropping the gem on there as nicely as I can. And then once I think it's nice and lined up, I'm gonna squeeze. I'm gonna squeeze and I'm gonna press. I'm gonna squeeze and press for a few seconds. I'm just gonna let that hold, let that hold, let that hold. After about 10, 15 seconds, I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna to start to scrape all the stuff around it because they do not want to have any of this like excess glue messing up any of the paint job. I think I did a decent job to where it probably wouldn't be noticeable at all. But now that's it here, it's stuck on there. That's how I did the gem. That's how I was able to do it after doing all this other stuff. Uh, ideally, I would cast my own gem, but for the sake of this video and it being a quick and easy cosplay tutorial, uh, yeah, I think this is the easiest way to go about it, cheapest way to go about it, and uh, it still gets the effect done pretty darn well. Now, let's talk about these antennas real quick. How did I do those? These are radio antennas. I picked these up on Amazon. They were five bucks. I got six of them. So they start off really small. They have a 180 degree hinge, and they have a really nice circle cut into the middle of the tab at the end. Now, usually I wouldn't be happy about having such a long tab, but this actually works out really great for this helmet. And let me show you why. On the inside of the helmet, hopefully you'll be able to see, there's a little black piece of foam 
and those two antenna bits with a stick sticking through the middle of both of them. Where did I get that stick? It's a little uh, wooden dowel. And I put it through just the right way to make sure they were attached and uh, holding these antenna in the right directions. And then there's a piece of foam and they're holding those all together really nicely. Now we're gonna glue all that together with hot glue. Now, I wanna show you how I do that too, really, really quickly, because this was a little bit trickier. I had to line up these antenna the way I wanted them to, so I made a straight up 90 degree, 90, almost 90 degree with it. And I lined up one at the angle that I wanted it to be, so I wanted it to be this way for the first one. I lined it up, saw where I liked it, pressed gently, kind of like I did with the gem. And then I went and did the same thing at the same angle I wanted for the other one. And I pressed up against the foam again. That gave me two indentations. Now, these aren't perfect. And this, what I'm about to show you isn't perfect either, but I have a pair of small scissors. You could do this with a knife too. I actually don't recommend it with a knife. I would recommend you do it with the scissors because the scissors have a little bit more thickness with it. All you're gonna do is go find that same spot that you punched in on the foam. And you're gonna punch in again with the, the scissors just enough to where they poke through. See how the tip is just sticking out just enough, not a lot, just enough. You're gonna pull that back out and do the same thing on the other side to where it comes through just enough, pull it back away. Now, that's when you take your antenna, you're gonna push it in to where you feel that corner start to tear a little bit more. And then you just push the antenna in all the way. And it sits, it gets gripped onto by the rest of the helmet or by the rest of the foam. Now I'm holding it by the tip in the back and you see how much extra space there is in there from the tip in the back? So what I did was I added some more foam and a stick and we're gonna glue that right now on the inside of that to hold it all together. Here we go. So the first thing I'm gonna glue is the stick to the antennas and to the foam. We're gonna put a nice good layer that way first. Then I'm gonna put a couple of like uh, little tacks all the, way, all the way around the outside of the little foam square bit. All right, that should hopefully be enough. Hold that in really nice. I'm gonna put just a little bit more in there in a certain spot. All right. Now I let that glue dry. I'm gonna let that cool. And then uh, we're gonna do some test fits and see how we like it. So that's exciting. Look how far that we got. Does this look good too? Like for a cheap cosplay helmet, it's really not that bad. And, uh, and I think we can go further with this project here pretty soon. Uh, maybe not like six months from now, but maybe like a year from now, we'll, we'll revisit this and we'll do some more advanced techniques, something outside of just foam and uh, soda bottles and antennas like this. What's the second suit up project, Dusty? Uh, you'll, you'll see, you will see, um, or maybe get a hint at the end of this episode. Who knows? And there we have it. The helmet is all done, so let's try it on and then let's have some fun with it. So throw it on the glasses real quick. All right, so slip on the jaw piece first. I might come back to this piece and make this an adjustable strap eventually. Cause you know, people's head changes. Think, things change, you know. All right, let's slide this in. Let's get this covered up really good. And there we go. All right, what do y'all think? This is what the visibility inside the helmet looks like. Hope it's a good idea for all y'all. Looking nice and even. Oh, yeah. And there you have it. 
Your Kamen Rider helmet is completely painted, you got your hat attached to it, and it's ready to be worn. If you made it this far, you're done. Congratulations, you just made your first Kamen Rider mask. And if this isn't your first Kamen Rider mask, and you've made other helmets before, let me know what you thought about the pattern. I absolutely appreciate the feedback. Where do we go from here? I have a few ideas. I don't want to go too, too crazy with it. If there was going to be anything I really wanted to do, maybe we'll have to wait for a suit-up special. But that's okay, because in the meantime, we're going to be working on some suit-up shorts. Then maybe we'll have that suit-up special. Maybe a follow-up to this episode. But I know for sure, suit-up will be definitely be back later this summer. What we'll be doing later this summer? Well, the next project is something kind of special from a giant from the land of light. Hope you guys are feeling super ultra because we're going there next time. Rider jump and rider kick into that uh, subscribe button for me. Hit the bell. And don't forget to do. Catch you here next up on Suit Up. Bye! Hey, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on when the next episode is posted. Also, we now have a membership options for anyone who is interested in sneak peeks for upcoming videos, behind the scenes, and some early pattern. We're also playing with the idea of bringing back streams for members only. If any of that sounds up your alley, click those buttons down below. Also, if you're following along at home, be sure to show us your progress. Use hashtag SuitUp on social media. We may feature your work on the show. See you next time. Why are you still here? Go home. Ferris Bueller. Hey, did you watch the whole show? Like all the episodes? You, you stayed after that weird, like, black void for a second and then stayed just to see what this part is? You? You're why I like to make these videos. So, yeah. Thanks. Catch you next time. Be good. And uh, maybe go look at my website. There might be a secret pattern somewhere. Oh. Oh, he did do a secret pattern.